Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy Fitzmo TV here, aka GLord33. I'm here with a little bit of a late night upload for you guys. I'm trying to get back on producing daily content. Um, but you know, this is something I kinda wanted to do back when I first got back on YouTube. Uh, you know, oh, I wanted to do this before actually I got my channel back, you know. Um, because while I, during the month that I wasn't able to upload, you know, CM Punk, the announcement that CM Punk was going to be on WWE Backstage was made, and I was never able to make a video on it. I wanted to make a video talking about his return, me reacting to some of the stuff he said, especially him burying Seth Rollins on WWE Backstage, calling Seth Rollins irrelevant, just trying to look for, you know, sense of relevancy. I absolutely love that, but I was never able to make videos on that. Um, it's not... Always that I'm gonna make videos on WWE backstage. I enjoy the show personally. You know, I hate, I don't really find it fair that WWE talks are unhappy with how the ratings go for the show. You guys gotta remember, you know, it's one thing you have Monday Night Raw every Monday, AEW, NXT on Wednesdays, you have SmackDown on Fridays, you know, some Saturdays, you know, every once in a while you have a takeover. You also have some situations when you have uh, pay-per-views on a Sunday and it, it messes the flow up of your program. So, and then you want, you want WWE fans to watch all that wrestling during the week and then you also want them to um, come in and watch uh, WWE backstage on Tuesday nights at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. At that time, it's a Tuesday night, it's a school night. Most kids are in bed because they have school in the morning. Most parents and most adults are in bed either watching another show or they're just sleeping because they have to wake up early to go to work in the morning. It's not that fair. You know, getting 100,000, 200,000 viewers for WWE backstage at that hour of night on a Tuesday night, WWE should not be complaining in my opinion. But either way, WWE and Pug made his third appearance on WWE backstage tonight. And I wanted just to quickly talk about some of the points he made. I love CM Punk, you know, and I just love his honesty. You know, he's not signed with WWE, he's signed with Fox. You know, I hate how people in the community want to say, he's signed with WWE. No, he's not, Clowns. He's signed with Fox. And he's honest about certain things in the product. And, you know, I just find this funny. One of the things that I found hilarious was uh, uh, Seth Rollins' uh, not Seth Rollins, CM Punk's reaction to the Lana and Rusev story. And he actually went on like a one-minute speech talking about how he would book the storyline. And I found this hilarious. So I'm going to play that for you right now. Here we go. Is you have, they have a match, they have a blow off, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think Rusev wants to be involved with Lana anymore on screen. So <laughs> him, uh, Lana and Bobby go off, they do their thing, but eventually, you know what? Lana grinds on the nerves, Bobby's sick of her. So mm -hmm. what they do is, is he leaves Lana too. They have another divorce, okay? They're okay. out, they're out. She gets another tag team, Keith Corsi. okay, to go after <laughs> Rusev and Bobby, Rusev. who have become best friends. Oh yeah, because they have the the familiar, the ex-wife. Yeah, where they're yeah. just like, oh man, this wow. broad. We got, you know, yeah. they become yeah. drinking buddies. This yeah. new tag team with Lana in tow go after them, and what they do at WrestleMania, they put Lana in a shark. Put her in the shark oh, okay. cage well, because by WrestleMania, the new tag team is already oh, so sick of Lana. Yeah. Okay, that the loser of the match. <laughs> Keeps gets Lana. what's in the gets shark Lana. cage, okay? Is you have they have a match, they have a. I'm telling you, it, it's pure entertainment, pure entertainment. But I absolutely love CM Punk's reaction. CM Punk in that one minute, in that one minute, talking about, you know, Rusev and Lana is better than this whole two month storyline. All right, just him fantasy booking it, you know, having. The, the blow up match at TLC and then eventually Lashley and Lana break up and then Rusev and um, Lashley they bond they become a tag team because over their agreement of how nauseating Lana is then a new tag team comes in later on and then they um, have to deal with Lana and then they don't want to deal with her anymore so then at WrestleMania you put Lana in a shark cage you put her annoying ass in a shark cage and the loser gets Lana. So there's the incentive. I absolutely love it. I love it, man. And like I said, CM Punk just sitting there booking this story and the, how quickly he did it is better than the whole last two months we've had to deal with this garbage story on. I absolutely love it. But that wasn't the only thing CM Punk talked about. He talked about AOP. 
um, in the Seth Rollins' heel turn. And he said, he flat out said, Seth Rollins is not a good babyface. You know, he said it. He said Seth Rollins is way better at being a heel than being a babyface. And I totally agree. But the thing about it is, if we're being honest, that's most WWE superstars. I, I believe you, it can be said that most WWE superstars are better at being heels than babyface. It's ev it's easy to be an, an evil guy. It's harder to be a bad guy. Punk said it. I've said it on my Raw Smackdown reviews on the podcast before. It's not hard to be a bad guy. All right, you just gotta get you just to go out there and do things that make people want to boo you. You know, it's easy to be a heel, but it's even harder to be a special heel. All right, a heel that get, that the fans just don't want to see. Some of the most iconic heels, CM Punk's heel turn back in 2012. That was absolutely iconic. It was an, it was amazing. You know, so many Stone Cold, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Rock. They've all had great heel runs throughout the company. Throughout, throughout the, the years of WWE. It's harder to be a babyface in the heel. Because to be a babyface, you have to get the fans to like you. And for a time, Seth Rollins was able to do it. But over time, with the stuff he was doing before, in 2019, it got old. It got repetitive. And people just didn't want to see it no more. And that's one of the reasons why Seth Rollins slowly got turned into a heel. Why the fans slowly turned on Seth Rollins. Because the things he was doing in the past just weren't working anymore. And as the days went by, we found Seth Rollins more and more unlikable. But the ironic thing here is, Seth Rollins now being a heel, it's actually going to get him sheared. Because the fans wanted Seth Rollins to turn a he into a heel. You know, it's like the new flavor of the month. Kevin Owens was a heel for the longest time. And the WWE turned him babyface earlier this year. Like, beginning of the year. And then he turned heel again on Kofi Kingston. And then he turned babyface again on Shane McMahon this summer. And now, KO is arguably the biggest babyface on the main roster right now. He's right up there with the Roman Reigns, the Daniel Bryans, you know, the Rey Mysterios, Randy Orton's, etc., etc. You know, and I love what Kevin Owens is doing. And I hope, you know, if I was WWE, I would push Kevin Owens to the moon. I would have him win the Men's Royal Rumble. I would have him go challenge Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. You know, but Seth, I mean, CM Punk also made a very good note talking about how the AOP and Seth Rollins, we don't know what this faction is going to be. Seth Rollins has aligned himself with AOP. But the thing that we have to understand is, we, we Seth cannot be... Seth cannot be like the Shield. CM Punk said this. He's going to give this time. He wants to see where it goes. You know, but this cannot be like the Shield. You know, AOP, they've been known for wrestling in their vests in the, in the past, just like Seth Rollins did when he was a member of the Shield. This cannot be like the Shield. This has to be different. It has to be organic. Yes, you know, the Shield and AOP, it has the chance to be a great duo. I don't, a trio, not duo. I don't think it's going to be on the level of the Shield. The Shield is one of the most iconic fractions in WWE history. All right, what they did may never be, you know, done again. But still, I think this could be a really good trio. But it's going to be interesting to see AOP with Seth Rollins. I don't know if they're going to have their own name. I don't know what it's going to be called. But they have to have a separate identity. I I don't want to look at AOP and Seth Rollins on Monday nights and think, oh, this is a bootleg version of the Shield. I don't want to seek that. Because I remember for the longest time when we wanted Roman Reigns to turn heel, right? When we wanted Roman Reigns to turn heel, we thought, all right, you turn Reigns heel, you either align him with the Usos or AOP. They did the exact opposite. They instead took Seth Rollins to turn him heel and align him with the AOP. I think they have the chance to be an absolute dominant faction on Monday Night Raw. I don't know where they're going to go. You know, after this Kevin Owens feud, I really don't know what you do with Seth Rollins. Yes, he has challengers. You know, you can have him go up against Mysterio for the United States Championship. You can have him go up against a Ricochet. You can have him go up against a Randy Orton. There's feuds there. But the thing about it is, you know, AOP, what do you do with them? Do you have, like, Seth Rollins win the United States Championship and AOP win the Raw Tag Team titles? I don't know. It could be the OC 2.0. Maybe... Maybe this is an idea. Maybe you turn OC into baby faces. You know, Styles has always been a great baby face. And uh, the uh, Gallows and Anderson, I feel like they could be a good baby face tag team if WWE would just book them correctly. Maybe you can turn them baby face and have an OC versus Ron's AOP feud. I could get 
Find that. Um, but the main point is, like Punk said, AOP and Seth Rollins, they can they have to have separate identities. All right, they cannot. I we cannot look at AOP and Seth Rollins, and they're gonna need some kind of name because it's gonna get annoying just saying AOP and Seth Rollins. It's already hurting my tongue just having to repeat it over and over again. But the point is, they this this new trio needs to have some kind of identity. It cannot be similar to the Shield. It can't be. Because then it's going to look bad on Seth Rollins, it's going to look bad on AOP, and it's just going to ultimately not be special, and it's going to fail. Um, and basically, that was about it. You know, there was a funny moment where CM Punk talked about the dog food, and then he actually um, talked about and he, he gave us a little more of an insight into the mind of Vince. Because remember, Punk worked with Vince for years when he wasn't on the main roster, when he was the top guy. You know, he said um, when Baron Corbin was on the show tonight, um, and they said that that was 1,000% real dog food. Poor Roman. But um, Pug said he could imagine Vince McMahon sitting backstage and saying, we need to use real dog food. da 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 this, da 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 And the way he imitated Vince McMahon, I found that funny. But other than that, you know, it's always good to see CM Punk on WWE backstage. I just wanted to give my thoughts really quick on WWE backstage and having Punk on there. You know, I might do these videos, depending on how this video does and if you guys like it. I'll do more videos like this. Reviewing segments from WWE backstage. Um, remember, CM Punk's not on the show every single week. But either way, let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you guys want me to do this on a weekly basis, you know, just let me know. Um, but as always, if you guys haven't checked out my Monday Night Raw review, that video is live on the channel. Go talk to that. We talk in depth on Seth Rollins' heel turn. We have AEW and NXT tomorrow. I'll most likely do a review. But, you know, I might be streaming tomorrow night with Xenoverse. So, I don't know, but we definitely, there will be some kind of upload tomorrow. Um, but Thursday, most likely Thursday, we're going to do TLC preview predictions. Friday, SmackDown Live. Um, Saturday, uh, not, not, Saturday, I don't know if I'll have a video. Probably My Hero. And then Sunday, we have WWE TLC live stream. So I haven't done a live stream in a grip. So I might be, so most likely we're going to do a WWE TLC live stream, but I'm not exactly sure. But no matter what, we will be doing a WWE TLC review live on the channel immediately after WWE uh, TLC 2019 ends. So make sure you guys are, you know, subscribe for all that. Like, comment, subscribe as always. If you guys are new to the channel, enable notifications by clicking the bar next to my name, Fitzmonk TV. So you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Make sure to follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day, guys. Peace.